Welcome back everyone. In our last video, we went over how to calculate effective annual rates. But what if we want to calculate the effective rate for a period other than one year? First, we'll look at how we can calculate the effective rate for these non-annual periods. Next, I'll explain how we can convert effective annual rates into periodic rates. And lastly, I'll explain how this formula can apply in all situations, including those where we're solving for the effective annual rate. Let's start with a simple example. Suppose your boyfriend's cousin's uncle's godson's ex-wife lends you $500 at 9% interest, compounded quarterly. What's the effective interest rate over the life of the loan if you pay the loan back after two months? Obviously, an annual rate wouldn't be very useful. We want to know effectively how much interest was paid for those two months, expressed as a percentage of the total investment. To calculate this, we have to figure out what two-month effective rate would give us the same return as 9% compounded quarterly over those two months. We can start this problem in a similar way to how we would calculate the effective annual rate. If we were calculating EAR, we would think of one year as one compounding period, and calculate the interest rate that would earn us the same return compounded only once per year as we earn on our interest compounded each quarter. Except here, we want to find the effective return for a two-month period instead. If interest were compounded only once in a two-month period, then we would have six periods in a year. We want to know what rate compounded six times in a year is equivalent to the return we earn in one year at 9% interest, compounded quarterly. We can display this as 1 plus 9% over 4 to the power of 4 should be the same as 1 plus the return for two months to the power of 6. Note that 9% over 4 is our APR divided by the number of periods in a year, 4 to get the rate that we earn for one quarter, which would be compounded four times in a year. Here, we're expressing both of these periodic returns on an annual basis. We do this so it's easier to compare the two situations. We know that there are four quarters in a year and six two-month periods in a year. It's sort of like finding the lowest common denominator of two fractions, or putting both rates on the same playing field, annual terms. Let's set these returns equal and isolate for the two-month rate. Isolating for R, the rate of the two-month period, gives us 1 plus 9% over 4 to the power of 4 over 6 minus 1. Remember that a sixth root is equivalent to a 1 over 6 fractional exponent. So our effective two-month rate is 1.49%. We can express this logic as a general formula. 1 plus our annual percentage rate over m, the number of compounding periods, to the power of m equals 1 plus our periodic rate to the power of k, the number of effective periods in one year. The right-hand side of this formula tells us how much we earn on our investment at our given interest rate and compounding schedule. In our previous example, the APR was 9%, and M was 4 since we compounded our investment every quarter. Essentially, this is our return for one quarter, 9% over 4, compounded 4 times to get an annual return. The left-hand side of this formula sets the return equal by adjusting the period rate. The exponent K is the number of effective periods that could fit in one year. It helps to express our period returns in annual terms by compounding the number of periods we have in a year. In our previous example, the period was two months, so we could compound our effective period rate six times during one year. Isolating for r, we get r equals 1 plus i over m to the power of m over k minus 1. We can plug in the figures from our previous example. 1 plus 9% over 4 to the power of 4 over 6 minus 1 gives us 1.49% again. Our fractional exponent essentially tells us how many compounding periods there are in one of our effective periods. Here we have 4 over 6. Thus, there's two-thirds of one compounding period in our two-month effective period. From the timeline, you can see that because there are three months in a quarter, then two-thirds of a quarter is equivalent to a two-month period. As the number of compounding periods in one year increases, the effective period rate increases. This is because more frequent compounding leads to a higher effective return. In other words, you're earning interest on your interest at a faster rate. You can also see that as k, the number of effective periods in one year increases, the effective period rate decreases. This is because the more effective periods you can fit into one year, the shorter these periods must be. The shorter the period, the lower the effective return, because you'll be taking the same annualized rate and chopping it into smaller effective rates. Let's try one more example and use our results to explain how our formula might work in cases where the effective period is the same length as the compounding period, or our effective period is one year. Please pause the video and try this problem on your own. 
Now let's try it together. Our stated interest rate is 15%, compounded every four months, so three times in one year. M is three. There are six months between September and March, so K is two, since there are two six-month periods in a year. Essentially, we're looking for the effective semi-annual rate. Thus, our effective semi-annual rate is R equals 1 plus 0 0.15 over 3 to the power of 3 over 2 minus 1, or 7.6%. Notice that if k, the period for which we're calculating the period rate, is the same length as m, our actual compounding periods, then the effective period rate will just be APR over m, the same effective rate we've been using in our time value of money formulas. Since this is aligned with the way we actually compound our investment, there will be no other compounding effects to consider. Our exponent would simply be 1, causing r to equal 1 plus the period rate minus 1, so simply the period rate. For example, if you paid back your loan after 4 months instead of 6, then both M and K would be 3, and thus the effective period rate, or the effective quarterly rate, is simply the 15% APR divided by 3 periods, 5%. Notice that this formula works in all cases, including cases where we're trying to calculate the effective annual rate. In this case, K would just be 1, and we would be left with the formula we discussed for calculating EAR. So you only need to remember one formula. Today we learned how to solve for the effective rate of a period other than one year. We can apply this to more complex investing and borrowing problems, where the length of our investment can't be expressed in whole compounding periods. In these problems, we can use a fraction to represent the total number of compounding periods that occur, where m is the number of compounding periods that can fit in one year, and K is the number of effective periods that can fit in one year. Thanks for watching. Thank you.